KD all day. For this next problem, let's apply our testing number skills to a more complicated absolute value problem. And so here, our prompt says, is the absolute value of a plus two greater than e minus three? And so note, we have two variables. And we have absolute value bars on each side of our inequality. And so this is a good candidate for testing numbers. I want to preface this problem, though, by saying that testing numbers is not necessarily the only way of doing this. So you might see some sort of algebraic way, or you might just be able to see examples in your head. And so I don't want to suggest that any of those approaches would be wrong. They might even be better. But on the GMAT, I don't want to spend five minutes deliberating how I'm going to approach a problem. So if I have multiple ways of doing something, I just want to pick one and commit to it. And so let's just pretend that we have committed to doing this problem by testing numbers. And to do that might mean we need some more space. I will delete the data sufficiency answer choices. Should not be an issue because you should have those memorized. Statement one says B is less than a negative A. So let's design our experiment so that we can use our framework in an organized way. And so make a table here. We have an A. So what are we going to need? We're going to need an A. We really need a negative A based on this statement, but that means we're going to need an A, or we can use an A to generate a negative A. So we need an A, we need a B, we need a negative A. We need to make sure we, we fit the criteria of our statement. So we need to make sure that negative A is greater than B. So that's why I like putting it to the right of B in my table. And then don't forget about our criteria. We need to answer our question. So is the absolute value of A plus 2 greater than B minus 3? And because this is where we are answering our question, I always put question marks there. So I remember that that is our criteria. So for the first set of numbers that we choose, remember, just choose the easiest numbers that you can think of that fit our criteria. Let's say that a is equal to 2 to start, which means negative a is equal to negative 2. And so all that matters for b is b has got to be less than negative a. And so I will just say negative 3. And this satisfies our criteria, and it should give us either a yes or no to our question, which for our first example is all we care about. And so now, so what is the absolute value of a plus 2? And that is the absolute value of 2 plus 2 which is just the absolute value of 4, so that is equal to 4. And then what is the absolute value of b e minus 3? And so that is the absolute value of negative 3 minus 3, which is the absolute value of negative 6, which is just equal to 6. And so, in fact, here, 6 is greater than 4, and so that means we have a no to our question. Now we are choosing our second example, and this is the one that matters. This is where we are actively trying to get a yes because we want a result that is different than our first one. Here we have to think a little bit when we choose our numbers. You don't want to necessarily just choose the easiest ones that you can think of. For example, I probably would not want to choose something like negative 2 here. And why is that? Well, we want to make our left side the absolute value of a plus 2 greater than b minus 3 here. So if we chose negative 2, well, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And so this is actually the lowest possible absolute value you could have on your left side. So that's likely just to give you another no. If I want to maximize my left side, maybe I'll make it something like negative 20, because when I take the absolute value of a large negative, it should give me a major positive number. So if a is equal to negative 20, negative a is equal to positive 20. And all that matters is b has got to be less than negative a. So I'll say b here is equal to 4. So what does this give me? So here we have the absolute value of a plus 2, and so that's the absolute value of negative 18. That is just equal to 18 compared to the absolute value of b minus 3, so that's just the absolute value of 1. And in this case, we have a yes, because 18 is greater than one. And so once we have a no and a yes, that is good to prove in sufficiency. We can stop. We do not have to choose any more examples. And so if the statement were to have been sufficient, we would have just kept getting no's. And maybe I would have chosen 
three examples. And after that point, I would have said it's sufficient to say no. But remember, I would not have necessarily proven it at that point. So now for statement two, statement two looks like maybe we should have started with this one because this one looks like the easier statement. It says B is less than zero, but it does not tell us anything about A. And so by itself, this is not going to be helpful and we can eliminate B and we can go sort of straight to looking at one and two together. This is where it pays to be organized and to have done our work up front in a very organized fashion because now we can reuse our examples from statement one that also fit statement two. And so that means our examples from here where B is negative. And so it looks like we cannot reuse our second one, but we can reuse our first one. And so when we are looking at our statements in combination, it's sort of like we are starting with a no already. And if our strategy is still to prove insufficiency, now we're just trying to come up with a yes, but it has to be a yes where B is negative. So what should we do? So maybe I can reuse A is negative 20 again, because I still want a large value for my left side here. A is negative 20, negative A is positive 20. Once again, now I just need to make B negative. I want to make my left side or my right side here small. I'll say maybe B is negative one. Now I have fit the criteria for each of my statements. Let's see if I can get a different result here, if I could get a yes. Once again, absolute value of A plus two is going to be equal to 18. And here the absolute value of B minus three is going to be the absolute value of negative four, which is just equal to four. And here, 18 is greater than four. So I got my yes, and that is sufficient to prove insufficient. And so even together, our statements are not sufficient. And we can say our answer is E, and we have proven it. So in our next video, we will combine all of our absolute value skills within a single complicated absolute value question.